championship. So much on the line, and it's just the upper quarterfinals. Alien Corey, take it away. Thank you very much, Maria. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Hello, wherever you are joining us around the world. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and we are sending somebody to the World Championship in this first matchup. Mike Sigrist versus Shota Yasaoka. Corey, who do you like in this one, my friend? Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty close one, but we did see Shota already take down this Grixis Vampires deck in round one against Brent has you know has some experience against this matchup already so you gotta favor shota but it's a mid-range battle so it's really could go either way and both players such excellent excellent players of the game of magic so it can go either way let's see if the decks behave for both these players as we take a look at the opening hand here so he decides he's happy with that and is going to keep as well as shota does as well let's kick things off yeah, absolutely. A pretty solid hand. Sigrus is definitely going to be looking for land number three uh, to be able to clinch that uh, Kaido Shizuki to be able to get some card advantage going. But outside mm -hmm. of that, pretty strong hand. And then Shota has that nice two into four where you can cast Black Market Tycoon and then ramp it into something else. And that was a big draw for Mike. Oh, beautiful <laughs> draw there. Able to attack here with the underdog and then follow up with a Kaito Shizuki if he so chooses. But it's going to go towards Fable of the Mirror Breaker. First and foremost, get that saga going. Yeah, absolutely. Any of the three drops really great here at giving you card advantage. The Shaman itself just giving you card advantage by giving you mana uh, also counts. And you can maybe get some creatures into your graveyard with Chapter 2 of Fable the Mirror Breaker and then do some corpse appraising a little later. So Fable of the Mirror Breaker is going to allow a discard here of up to two cards so that we can get a draw for Mike Sigrist. Looks like Kaito Suzuki is the first selection here. Let's see if anyone else from the hand joins. It's going to be Evelyn the Covetous that gets discarded here. Likely just looking for a couple more land drops to be able to do some more shenanigans and also fueling the graveyard for the Corpse Appraiser, which has been very impressive this weekend, I must say. Yeah. It really has been. You know, it doesn't seem like it's really a powerhouse of a card. A three mana, three, three that sometimes draws you a card, not even always. But then when you think of the synergies with the decks and what other people are playing in standard, it ends up looking really good. And one of the main reasons is because Reflection of Kiki Jiki, the flip side of Fable mm -hmm. the Mirror Breaker, being able to copy that and just always draw a card is just so sweet. I mean, who doesn't love to draw oh, cards? Awesome. I mean, just the potential of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, you know, it's one of these cards where if you're playing red, you should probably be playing that card. And yeah. we have seen it show up in plenty of deck lists this weekend. And yeah, like you said, the possibilities, they're almost endless, especially with ETB creatures, creatures that have haste. It's its yep. so cool. And we even saw, you know, a lot of people go into Twitter saying that Fable the Mirror, including Mike Sigris, actually, mm -hmm. that Fable the Mirror Breaker is just the best card in standard. And to quote, it's not even close. You know, when that <laughs> used to be a spot for Azika's Chariot, and I think what most of oh, us yeah? would think as the best card. But yeah, Fable wow. the Mirror Breaker just came to play this weekend. Not Wandering Emperor, nothing like that. Just, I, just Fable the Mirror Breaker. I'm just the messenger. That's just what I read, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, bold <laughs> words there, Mike Sigris. Let's see if uh, this card performs for you in this matchup, which it seems to be doing. We now have the Workshop Warchief down on the battlefield, Thrag Tusk at home, as he's been affectionately known. Mm. Just to get some big bodies in the way here, because this is quite the board that Sigris is assembling. Yeah, agreed. And Workshop Warchief is a one of in the main, but there's three more copies in the <laughs> sideboard for Shota. And, uh, you know, I am I am no uh, Shota Yasaoka for sure, but it seems like this is a really good mid-range card, so I wouldn't be too shocked if he doesn't just bring in the other three copies. It seems great in this matchup yeah. where it can't really be exiled too easily. Yeah, no, and it leaves a body behind. It gains your life. It's got trample when it yeah. matters. It's an excellent card. And fun fact about uh, some of the cards that we've seen in Shota's deck, this is a very unconventional standard list. Very. Frank Carson tweeted out that there's only six Gala Greeters, four Black Market Tycoons, and three Ginny Fae submitted amongst all of the championship deck lists, and every single one of them made the top eight between his list and the Naya midrange deck of Hisamichi Yoshigoe. So that's kind of cool. 
Okay, well, I guess I take it back. Fable the Mirror Breaker is not the best card in standard. It's Gala Greeters. You know, I mean, that, the numbers do not lie here, people. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 100% conversion rate? Come on. Come on. I also got to sit down with Mike a little bit here this morning and talk to him and just ask, hey, how you feeling about the matchup? He's like, yeah, if my removal spells line up, I'm going to win. If they don't, I'm going to lose. And then also added a really, really fun quote. He's like, yeah. quote, unquote, I hope he gets mana screwed. <laughs> Yeah, I think most of the time you want to be playing some good old fair <laughs> games of magic. I think Mike knows what's on the line and really is okay with whatever would happen as long as he gets the W. Uh huh. I mean, <laughs> also look at it from this perspective, right? Shout has already locked up his spot in the World Championship, so if he wins here, yep. it opens up a spot at large. Mike Sigurd still yep. has to win then. If he wins here, he's in. He doesn't have to stress about World Championship stuff. He can just focus on winning the title this weekend. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, opening up one of those slots, you know, some uh, league members are going to be very much going for Shota here in this match. Uh, Jakob Toth and Austin Bersavich, uh, you know, being the number one and number two people for sure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of these players who are already qualified and in the top eight, they're going to have some fans from the leagues as uh, we work our way through this weekend. Now Shota is getting shovy. Workshop Warchief is like, okay, cool. My dude's big. Let's uh, let's start swinging in here and do some damage. Yeah, and just seeing if Mike wants to trade, get a 4-4 four, four to come into play. This always just feels bad when you trade with these types of creatures. It'd be like, not only am I taking three damage because of Trample, but you're just getting a creature that is at comparable size. Uh, you know, so the, the answer for Warchief or Workshop Warchief, mm -hmm. the best ones is like Wandering Emperor, something that you exile and you deal with both, but... Here's another big one. Ooh, fireworks. Now that explains why we got Shovey there. Also, you improve the toughness on your side of the battlefield because you get a 4-4. But now you have to deal with Zeotora as well. That's going to start picking things up, chucking them at your face, and getting treasures as well with the sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, this is just nasty. So... Zeotora is an excellent card, and that opens up the Riveteer's Charms for Shota to get rid of something additionally on this battlefield, which could be the Corpse Appraiser if he wants to go that route. Okay, so dealing with the Reflection, getting treasures. Oh, this, this card is so sweet, just being able to <laughs> generate so much value. Usually you kind of think of this card being paired with like Magda, you know, to be able to mm -hmm. find more dragons like this. Not really utilizing that type of synergy here, just saying six mana, six, six dragon that has a good ability, even better. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's... Uh, can Mike kill a board here? He's got, a mana. He's got five, six, seven of the land, so he could go for the Meat Hook Massacre here, just reset this battlefield. Gotta be tempting. Absolutely has gotta be tempting here, but it looks like, what, we can Meat Hook Massacre know, for short? five, right? Yeah, Meat yeah, Hook for five. Yeah, short. But, I mean, this does open up the opportunity. Does Mike want to try to attack with some of these creatures to force a scenario mm. like that? And, yep, that's exactly what Mike's going to do. There is some other lines where you can, you know, Volted Surge um, and then Meat Hook. Yeah. You could, yeah, you could, you could do that to get rid of everything on the board. But then, all of a sudden, Mike is completely out of resources besides Hive of the Eye Tyrant. And... The Jun, you know, Shota's Jun deck having those two Riveteers charms that represents six more cards if need be. Plus, Shota has a den as well, so that would be pretty bad news bears for Mike. Yeah, so we're just gonna see the one block here. Tenacious Underdog is gonna get trampled on by a Rhino, Corpse Appraiser, letting that go straight on the through. Shota knows that uh, this dragon is far too valuable to stick in the way here. And yeah, how really does heads want to up. Proceed? Yeah. Really heads up, no block there by Shota. God, he's good. Oh, of course he's good. It's excellent. <laughs> Never misses anything. <laughs> Land for turn and Meat Hook Massacre. I mean, you can just do it for one here. Yeah, that's that's going to be the interesting part. Do you do it for one or do you go big and do it for four and then finish mm. off Zeatora with yeah, Voltage, Voltage Surge? Surge? Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, you just have to. That seems to be the plan. There's not, looking at uh, Sigurus' list right now, there is not really that many ways to deal with the Resolve Zeotora. I'm seeing two Infernal's Grasps, 
a soul transfer and you know pairing together two removal spells like two voltage yeah. surge or something like that but only a couple clean answers yep and with voltage surge in hand it's able to clear it off the table here and nothing that shota can do about that unfortunately oh, no need to sacrifice the artifact there the two points of damage will get it done and the Meat Hook Massacre will keep the life total at a decent 17 here for Mike Sigrist. Yeah, and down to five with a Meat Hook Massacre in play for Sigrist with Tenacious Underdog and Den. You know, it's not too out of the realm to think that Sigrist can squeak this one out, but probably going to need some help off the top of the deck. Yeah. He does have the Tenacious Underdog that can be blitzed in. Yep. Gala Greeters here for... Shows Diasa Oka, who still has the second copy of Riveteer's Charm, only playing two in the main deck, so yep. fortunate enough to have it in there in case of a big hasty threat from Sigurd's side of things. And Gala Greeters being a really good card at, you know, kind of catching you up. There's surprisingly mm -hmm. not a lot of, you know, cards that made it into the standard metagame that just say gain life. You know, outside of the Wandering <laughs> Emperor, uh, the Exile ability, there's not a lot of life gain when you get into these dire situations, but... This one is a way to get you out. And ooh, that was a big draw for Mike. That is a nice draw indeed. Kaito Shizuki doesn't have anything to uh, draw and discard away at the moment. So wouldn't need an attacker mm -hmm. here. So we're going to see the Tenacious Underdog swing in here for three points of damage unless Shota decides to exile it or have it sacrificed by Sigurus. And that looks to be the go-to here for him. I think Shota would have preferred the exile. That, that would have uh, been a little better against these tenacious yeah. underdogs for sure. <laughs> Such a powerful <laughs> card. But as you mentioned, Riveteer's Charm does have a very nifty third mode there that lets you exile three cards and have a look for some more answers. So definitely needs that with two lands in hand at the moment. Yep, and looking to... Uh, the reason to do it now is just in case you find a Voltage Surge... Shota is mm -hmm. playing three of those, so to be able to just save some damage here and deal with it right away doesn't value Riveteer's Charming, um, the Tenacious Underdog alone, but if you can get two other cards plus a removal spell, that's much better. So down to two goes Shota. Tenacious Underdog will sacrifice at the end step. And the blood token life. cycled away the planeswalker, and there's a voltage surge to take care of this Gala really, Greeters. That was a really big draw because Shota's next turn, and with oh, okay, I guess yeah, these cards are face up. So you know, Mike knows that Shota just wants to play a couple creatures, maybe gain four life, and if Shota mm -hmm. goes to play one of them, and then Mike kills Gala Greeters, all of a sudden, you know, Shota's whole plan is kind of thrown off, and maybe Mike can sneak this out. Yeah, he does exactly yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, he just basically needs one of his creatures to die, and then that's one extra point of damage from the Meat Hook Massacre. So, excellent draw here from Mike Sigrist, able to take care of the life-gaining wow. critter. Uh, I and mean, now just needs... He, he just needs to put his creature on the board and go to end step and have it die. Exactly. Tenacious Underdog is just going to do it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, this hasty threat bringing back some more removal... Uh, and I, I'm sure Mike's looking over the list now to see if there's anything to prevent that, and it doesn't look like it. Looks like Mike's going to sneak this one out after it looked like Shota was going to be able to come back. Yeah, damned if you do, damned if you don't block. Wow. I mean, he doesn't even have to attack at this point. He can just go to the end step. Yeah. But we go out swinging, and Shota knows <laughs> that the writing is on the wall for game number one here in the upper quarterfinals. So Sigrist off to the ideal start. He wants to be in the World Championship, and the top six of this championship do just that. So one game away, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. Might be getting Voltage Surge framed and, you know, hung up uh, in his <laughs> wall behind him after that top deck. That was a huge draw, because just think what would have happened if that Voltage Surge or Infernal Grasp or something was not drawn, all of a sudden, Shota would have went up to five and had two blockers. Then after Mike Don't. makes that... Uh, Mike, yep. after Mike makes that attack, goes down to three and then gets to mm -hmm. keep regaining life. It would have been really tough for Mike to win at that point. Don't forget, Gala Greet is on that generous. You can only pick one mode per turn, so oh, either true, been the counter true. and the life. Yeah. True, but, true, you true. know, still would have been would have been relevant, but unfortunately, Voltage Surge said no. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> would have been able to at least get up to three, though, and that, that would have been the magic yeah. number to keep 
uh, Shota alive again um, since he would have went down to one. All righty, so sideboard plan here for Shota. What does he need to do to secure a victory in this next game? Yeah, looks like we are seeing those workshop uh, war chiefs come in. Those are excellent against other mid range decks. Um, Unleash the Inferno coming in as this super Coligans command. Another way to deal with Fable the Mirror Breaker as well as other creatures. Also, one of the few answers to deal with Evelyn the Covetous, which is a very mm -hmm. important card in these mid range battles. Uh, and then Unlicensed Hurst, you know, a card that these Grixis vampire decks weren't really having on their radar, even though it's extremely <laughs> good against them. Being able to target something in response to Corpse Appraiser targeting it, uh, you know, kind of shutting off that yeah. uh, is a really, really big deal. And you see Mike, maybe even because of that, taking out one Corpse Appraiser, just saying like, it's kind of a liability, but also maybe needs yeah. that threat and needs that card advantage to keep up with Shota. Yeah, because you really don't want to be in a situation where you're essentially playing a vanilla 3-3 three, three on turn three. You need something happening. And yeah. especially when you're playing cards like Fabled Merit Breaker, you want to keep abusing those ETB effects and those, you know, attack effects from these creatures that you can get. Yep, 100% agree with you on that. shota has got a nice one on the play there. Looks like all the colors, a hearse into Fable, mm -hmm. into Chariot, into, <laughs> into Workshop Warchief. That's a hand that I would sculpt if I was oh, Shota. Yeah. Exactly what you would want. Maybe a different <laughs> two drop, that could be arguable, but otherwise this is uh, really all you want. This is yeah, looking might excellent on the other side of things. Siggy just has two pieces of gas right now, and the Tenacious Underdog as well as a Braid. There's another land off the top, and, you know, it gets a little frustrating when you start flooding this early, but hopefully the gas cometh as Tenacious Underdog hits the battlefield. Yep, when you keep a two-spell, you know, five-land hand when one of them's a cycling land uh, in this kind of matchups, the only thing you're hoping you're like, yep, this hand is fine, just do not draw two lands... Mike did exactly that, but probably drew the <laughs> best card outside of that when you're flooded. Fable go. the Mirror Breaker just does such a great job at not only putting a creature into the battlefield two over time, but also just looting away these extra lands to find some spells later on. So where do we go next? It is always tempting to kill this little treasure goblin with yes. this abrade, but I see two much better targets for that abrade in the hands of Shota. So I wonder if Mike is just considering, do I kill that now? Do we get our own fable going? What's the mm -hmm. play? Yeah, I think we're going to see an attack first because Mike would be like, please block. Don't think Shota is going to fall for that. And then, yeah, it's no. the decision. Do you fable or abrade? But with Mike's hand being so weak, I would assume we're going to see fable the mirror breaker here yeah. just to have some good follow-up. Maybe next turn you could go abrade plus something if you loot away uh, some of these yeah. extra lands. Yeah, for sure. You want to get some lands out of hand here because this deck is certainly not, you know, mana hungry, as it were. It can make treasures. It can make mana in other ways. So definitely want to get some of these redundant lands out of hand. Sure, the Xander's Lounges can be cycled. But yeah, I like that play. Fable the Mirror Breakers going off against yeah, each other here as now Shota is deciding what to discard. Yeah, now we're going to see the very, very scary reality. If you're in Mike's seat, be like, wait, excuse me, you only discarded one magic card? Yeah, you see his eyes <laughs> raise right there. <laughs> Whenever you only discard one, you're like, okay, I have to know that Shota's hand is very good right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's always For scary. For sure, you know. <laughs> you want to keep those five lands. You want that chunky rhino down on this <laughs> battlefield, especially if you can get the 4-4 four -four off of it and Essica's Chariot starts making 4-4s. Four Hell yeah, yep. you are in business. But we do see an answer in hand here for Mike Sigrist in the form of the Abrade. And if he so chooses, he can also now duress away whatever other shenanigans Shota has. Yep, and now Shota gets to get some good information Aye, as what well. Is this? Yeah, that is brutal. But uh, chapter two of the Fable Mirror Breaker, if you pay attention closely enough, gives you some good information. You know, Shota very much could consider that Mike is flooded right now by discarding yeah. two lands. For sure. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't give this away in the uh, paper. You know, you wouldn't have a head shake and just be like, oh, come on. You know, very much poker face. But we can see in the cams from the players that he did not like that. And I don't blame him. Yeah, I don't know. I might give it away, but these two, you know, <laughs> world-class players are probably not giving it away. Now Alrighty, it's a, a braid. for Mike. Yeah, this is rough. Okay, 
this is, I mean, if you attack, yeah, sure, Cat's gonna probably die. No reason to really throw away your 3 2 at this point. Fable the Mirror Breaker is gonna flip, and here comes the reflection of Kiki Jiki. Oh, and another one drawn off the top. Nice. Yeah, not bad at all. And we were talking about all these cool things that Reflection of Kiki Jiki does in Mike's deck with all this vampire synergies. We haven't really got to talk about the craziest thing I think that Reflection can do for Shota, and that's copying Workchief Warchief, which is <laughs> ridiculous. Like, you get to gain oh, three yeah. life, you get oh, to attack for five, dies. and then when it dies, bring in a 4-4. Four, four. So that has to be the best reflection target that we've seen in Standard it's so, so far. so lovely. Now, that yeah. might actually change uh, Sigrid's target here for the Abrade, because might next be. turn, as soon as that guy isn't summoning sick, he's going to be making rhinos, and there's going to be a stampede. And that's the question. What do you hit? You know, do you do you hit the workshop war chief so then you can't copy that? Or do you hit the reflection so it can't copy anything? Then you gotta deal with a five three that will in turn bring a four four with it. And not only it's that, tough. but it brings a four four that a Zika's chariot can crew and copy mm -hmm. as well. Oh my god. Yep. It's just it's just copy pasta right now on Shoti Oka's yeah. board. You know, he's it's just the world is at his fingertips. He can do whatever he pleases. So Mike has to pick his target very carefully here. Either gets rid of the one copier or gets rid of the chariots. I think that I personally want to get rid of this reflection of Kiki Jiki, honestly. <laughs> I just, there's so many targets for this abrade. It's just, it just feels bad. Right now, Mike is just thinking, okay, I'm in such a really, really bad spot. I need to abrade something and I need to think about next turn. What can I draw? to give myself oh, a man. chance. And another tap try, try land is not really gonna do it here. I mean, he can cycle it away. Yep, gonna have to. I just seem to want to be in his hands. So here you go, have another one. That's three of them we've seen now. And now it seems like please, Mike please is really... Oh no. Oh wow, Velky coming. <laughs> oh, this is pain. Pain cometh. And now with Mike holding on to a braid, you gotta think he's trying to be reactionary with it. And that's just saying Mike's okay with a braiding workshop war chief right now because you you have to. If the reflection targets yeah. that, you absolutely have to do it. And that's not a great exchange because then, like I was saying earlier, Shota can just use that 4-4 four four to crew the chariot and then mm -hmm. copy it. Now that is mm -hmm. risky for Shota as well because well Mike has four cards. Shota doesn't know how absolutely miserable Mike's hand is right now like we do, but Uh-huh. You know what the other gross thing is that we could see, but probably won't because this is like not the most efficient use of your turn. Yeah. Copying that treasure token and getting Valky down. Yeah, well, it would cost a mana to copy the treasure as well, so it doesn't actually gain you a mana, so it'd still be one short. No, no, right? no, 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 no. With a with a chariot. Oh, with the chariot. If we didn't, yeah, do, if we didn't do any of this, now, yeah. It's obviously yeah, not yeah, happening. Yeah. We're, we're going to copy some rhinos, because why not? But yeah. then the chariot can still crew up and then copy that. So this is just a terrible situation. It's being stuck between a rock and a hard place, the hard place being a freaking rhino. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I I thought you were saying reflection, the treasure, and that's not how Odin. reflection works, so I was wrong in all <laughs> aspects there. <laughs> My apologies for not clarifying, but here we go. We're going to see that. Woo, look, see, wow. treasures, woo. All right, we got half and half there, so this is fine. <laughs> All right, so right there, Shota's just saying, I have a big enough battlefield. I don't want to be too susceptible to the Meat Hug Massacre, and that does only go up to six mana, so not necessarily Shota playing Tybalt off the backside of Velky, but we'll see if Shota wants to take a look with Velky and see the good news for Shota, bad news for Mike. I don't know. I, I think I think Shota is just so good that he knows that Sigurd's hand is so bad. Yeah. So he's going to hang on to that Velky. Ah, yeah. another land. What is this? Yeah, and Mike <laughs> Mike had a, a you know, uh, iffy keep when you're on the draw with, mm. uh, you know, five lands, two spells. But this deck is so good at drawing cards and filtering your draws with any kind of top deck like Fable the Mirror Breaker or Evelyn that, you know, it's not an outlandish keep. He just ended up drawing so many lands. Like, mm. what, maybe one or two spells out of yeah, six turns? Yeah, I mean, So Mike got pretty unlucky. He could, could copy... Uh, that, doesn't even, that doesn't even help. I mean, copying the, the underdog when it comes out, that does nothing for him here. Yeah, not He needs a blocker really. up. Yeah, and I think you just have to tenacious underdog attack and step one must have removal. 
and I don't even think that's going to be enough. But I mean, what mm-hmm. else is what else is he doing? That's the only game action he he can take here is bringing back tenacious underdog. Yep, he's trying as much as he can here, but uh, you're not gonna punch through a rhino, my dude. Those things are scary. Yep, and Mike Sigger is definitely taking the role of the tenacious underdog in this game for sure. Wow, oh, just on. insult to injury. All right, here. I'm getting tilted for him here. He's yeah. he's probably a lot calmer than me right now, but this is ridiculous. Unbelievable. And Shota's gonna know, like, you got nothing, bro, so he's just gonna <laughs> go fast, smack face, and get this game over and done with, and Siggy's like, please, just kill me. Let's get this over with so we can go to game number three. Yeah, Shota might, at this point, because there's so many actions that Shota could take, might just start the turn with Valky just to see what's up. Now, that's not the best use of the card, just in case Sigurd's hand was actually really good. But we could just kill him. Yeah, exactly. Right? Just, just... Riveteer's charm, copy the rhino, go. Dead, right? He's only at 10. <laughs> Ugh, this is rough. Now, of course, Shota's gonna think about every single possible card that could be in Mike Sigrist's clutch of four. Spoiler alert, it's four lands. Unbelievable. Yeah, not the best right now. Alrighty, well, let's see. There's so many different ways that Shota could choose to end this game right here, right now. So what do we go for? It's going to be a reflection of Kikijiki copying the little goblin shaman. And will we see the sacrifice mode chosen off of the Riveteer's Charm? Looks like we're just okay jamming up this Azika's Chariot and getting in there and just trying to probably copy a creature or a treasure. Oh, this is nice. So now not only is Shota still progressing his battlefield, you know, minorly with creatures, but getting enough treasures where now Tybalt can come into play. And we might be getting to the stage of the game that Shota even thinks about not casting Tybalt just to withhold information that it wasn't left in the deck. You know, this isn't a card yeah. that, you know, everyone considers for sure this is a card you leave in against Grixis. But it's it's good information to withhold for game number three if Shota already thinks like this game's over. Yeah. Tenacious underdog hurts like heck. It's two life to be paid. Soul transfer can keep one thing at bay, but not the rest of the critters that Shota has in his battlefield. So now we are tied at a game apiece here in our upper quarterfinals. If you are just joining us. Well, my friends, after this, we are putting someone into the World Championship, whether it be Mike Sigrist or Jacob Toth. So keep your eyes on the prize, my friends, yeah. as we're going to go to game number three. Now, Corey, how do you not tilt in that situation? What do you have to do going into game number three? Well, I mean, honestly, for both of these players, it, it seems kind of tough not to, or yeah, it seems tough to not tilt when you have a game like that, but both mm -hmm. these players understand that there is some variance within Magic. They've both had draws like that plenty of times and will have plenty more in their long, you know, amazing careers that that's not going to phase them. Mike's just like, okay, well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Now you just brush yeah. it off. You play their game. Uh, you know, it might affect, it might affect me, you know, it might affect some other players, <laughs> but it, it will not affect Mike. He's just going to play the same game, uh, that he did, you know, practicing for this matchup, same yeah. game that he's been playing all weekend and try to get the W and just play to the best of his abilities. Alrighty. So what are we looking for here? As we take a quick squiz at the sideboard, Shota is locked and loaded. We are on the play now for Mike Sigrist. Mm -hmm. So what's he looking for in his perfect opener? Just to curve out, um, you know, that classic four spells, three land type hand. Start with, um, you know, start with your your Grixis Triland, get Blood Blood Tithe Harvester, that's the best two drop, and then follow it with either Kaido Shizuki or Fable the Mirror Breaker, and then really go from there. Then you react to exactly to what Shona's doing, but that's the best way to start, and you kind of get that tempo game plan when you're this Grixis deck. And there's Blood Tithe Harvester, there's Fable the Mirror Breaker, but only one land. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate there. Mulligan's into a three land hand. It looks a little better. We have a Disdainful Stroke, which isn't what you want at this point in the matchup. Uh, but we do have to send something back here. So what do you think is going to go back to the library? Yeah, I think it's either Evelyn or Disdainful Stroke at this point. Your three drops are really what you want. Um, I... 
I think I would be with you at this point. I would probably put back Disdainful Stroke, but it is such a good card in this matchup and one of the only clean ways to beat Workshop Warchief. So maybe mm -hmm. there's a there's a higher emphasis on that. Uh, and Mike Sigris agrees. And I was just gonna say, we have one big problem with Shota's hand is not having any black mana. So that um, that black market tycoon was gonna have a lot of weight on it surviving, but top decking that <laughs> land on turn one was huge. Yeah, finding that proving ground, big, big addition. These tri lands have been to the standard decks. That's why we see such, you know, many varied colors going off here as Duress is going to take a look ski in hand for Mike Sigrist and spy a Fable the Murder Breaker. Oof. That's going to go bye-bye. Kaido Suzuki, though, that's a very nice draw indeed. Big draw, yeah, and Mike, uh, Get that you down. know... <laughs> yeah, yeah, play that, absolutely, because, and now, <laughs> I, you know, it's not even necessarily if Mike is going to play Kaido Suzuki or... He's going to, but it's just thinking, do I want to make the ninja or do I want to just tick up and discard a card? Um, and we'll see. I, I think it, it would make sense to me to make a creature here. Yeah. Kaito is also, a, you know, a mark of some of the best and the most played planeswalkers are planeswalkers that protect themselves. And you see Kaito yes. phases out. He's like, I'm just going to leave this guy here. I'll be back in a bit. Don't kill him kind of thing. Yes. So... One of the coolest design cards, you know, most of the time when we think of exactly what you're saying, Planeswalkers protecting themselves, it's destroying mm. a creature with the negative ability, you know, Chandra yeah. Torch of Defiance being the prime example for that. Uh, you know, so we haven't really seen a Planeswalker that protects itself by just not existing. <laughs> so yeah. really, really cool design <laughs> here um, by, by that card. Yep. <laughs> he stalks the shadows. Stealthy, et cetera, et cetera. yes. Stealthy, yes. <laughs> All right, but I like this turn that we've seen here. We've got an attack in. We have a blocker up for the Black Market Tycoon. So removal aside, Kaito should be good here. Yeah. And this would be and an if... excellent spot for said Disdainful Stroke, but unfortunately, Shota kind of duressed away. That. Yeah, Shota, Shota lined that up really well with those double duresses. But now you just look at Shota's hand, and it's just haymaker after haymaker. You can start mm -hmm. dropping these workshop war chiefs right now with help of black market uh tycoon or you can just yep. go for azika's chariot there's also some consideration to attacking with black market tycoon but tenacious underdog almost assuredly is going to get in front of that one. oh yeah oh for sure so i mean just having a just having a steady stream of card draw is what mike really needs at this point mm-hmm and you got to think, you know, Mike had that big draw on turn three to be able to have an active Planeswalker that's going to bring you a lot of card advantage. And while that's, you know, great and all, all fine here, just Haymaker after Haymaker, work, Workshop Warchief after Workshop Warchief, it's just really tough to deal with with this Grixis deck when you can't really exile yeah. it. Yeah, it's very tough. And Evelyn the Covetous, as, as good as she is, as, you know, gotcha as she can be with her flash ability, Mm -hmm. She's not going to take down a Rhino. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, but one card that does take it down cleanly is Soul Transfer. So that is mm -hmm. really what Mike is, is going to be hoping for here. Soul Transfer, it's going to be a little tough to get that enchantment plus artifact going to get that full value of it. But even just three mana exile this Warchief uh, is still big game. Oh, man, this is tough because just with its tenacious underdog, Kaito's dying. Evelyn yep. could jump in the way here and help him out, but seems like he's okay to let the Planeswalker go. And it did do some great work already, you know, yeah. created a creature, drew two to three cards, um, and now this will deal with the 5-3, and you can get Evelyn going, and this is really the reason why everyone on Mike's team decided to play Grixis. It was a heavy emphasis on Evelyn the Covetous because it's so good at these mid-range decks. It blocks an Azekas Chariot with that 2-5 body, as well as just mm -hmm. gets to play the strong mid-range cards from your own deck and your opponents in these mirror, you know, mid-range mirror matches. Ooh, that's some nice finds yeah. there. Two hits off of Evelyn the Covetous, Fable the Mirror Breaker, as well as the Blood Tithe Harvester, and draws mm -hmm. into a removal for... A 4-4 four, four over there, so I wouldn't be surprised Ooh. to see Blood Tithe Harvester into Voltage Surge to make sure that that freaking cat car is not copying rhinos. <laughs> Absolutely, and one other thing that happens when Blood Tithe Harvester comes into play, triggers Evelyn again. 
Oh, yes, it does. Ooh, more presents. More Mind cards. Now, do. you are going to see these cards go away from Mike's, um, mm -hmm. you know, bottom right-hand corner, but they're just saved for later. And now we'll see two more cards exiled, and Evelyn is done playing cards for this turn, but let's say there's a removal spell. We saw two lands yeah. there uh, being put away, but let's say it's a removal spell. You could play that card during Shota's turn, and yeah. that really is the power level of this card. Oh, so cool. It's sweet. It's so cool. Oh, look at this. We get to do three things this turn. Hell yeah, Siggy. <laughs> do stuff. Love it. And now when I was talking about Soul Transfer not really having the requirements to do everything, well, we do see an artifact and enchantment now, so that's going to be what Mike is really looking for, and that could put him, you know, very ahead in this game, where it looked kind of bleak a couple turns ago for Mike. Yep. Black Market Tycoon does have a bit of a downside where it's going to just bop you with the noggin for each treasure that you have, but being at 20 life, shout is not too fussed about that. Not yet, anyway. Also yeah, finds his own voltage surge. That doesn't kill Evelyn, however. No, it does not, unless you pair it with an attack. Uh, but, you know, Mike knows that that is one of the more common ways and more common pieces of removal in Shota's deck is the voltage surges. So going to be wary about a block. And when with Mike still being at 20, I, I would be very shocked to see Evelyn doing any blocking this turn. You know, you, you want to, <laughs> as as the pros say, use your life as a resource during these kind of yep. situations. And I think we'll see exactly that. Bang. Oh, nice. Alrighty. So just going straight for the cat car and not taking out the rhino. Excellent target here. Wow. Even but... there, oh. even there, we saw a minor reaction from Shota. A little yeah. eyebrow raised there, which is honestly more than we usually see. Shota is a very very calm and collected uh, player, mm -hmm. but knows even that was not great for him right now. Zika's Chariot copying these 4-4s four is a very good avenue for Shota to just gain a, you know, an insurmountable ad yeah. advantage on the board. Definitely. Now, this is an interesting decision where, it's an interesting point where Evelyn could actually block a 2-2 two -two and still yeah. be okay, because there's no other artifact on the battlefield there is one red mana available with that treasure, but no other artifact to clean we, her up here. So we do have the black market. Oh, tycoon. the cats can still make yet. Yeah, okay, ignore me. Yeah. Kitty no, I, I, was, I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, oh, this block actually feels kind of free. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure if Shota played a land either. Looks like he did. doesn't look like he did. I think he held on to the uh, Zeotaurus proving ground. Okay. Okay. Oh, Infernal Grasp. Hello. Wow, big draw stuff. Yeah, that's here. not getting discarded. Thanks so much there, friend. <laughs> Shota's, Shota's going to recognize that, be like, you did not draw land because, well, you would have discarded that. So uh, mm -hmm. Shota has to know that this is a card. Yep. This is something we want to see. And we got two copies of Fable the Mirror Breaker down now. We have an unblockable ninja who's doing its best to just ping away at the life total here, but Shota just keeps gaining life. <laughs> yeah, be like, attack for one, 20, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is acceptable. Yes, yes. All right, now we're going to see the other ability of Black Market Tycoon, which is not a good one. <laughs> it's not nope. a good one. It hurts you quite a bit. <laughs> Two damage for each treasure. Ooh, Riveteer's Charm that off deals. the top. That deals with an Evelyn the Covetous. It sure now, does. Shota in every game we've seen, I don't think I've seen him force a sacrifice. Is it time? <laughs> if there is a game that it would happen, it's got to be this one. First, <laughs> Shota's going to attack and be like, okay, same option as last time. Do you want to put Evelyn in front of anything and risk this voltage surge? And if Mike does that, you get to save Riveteer's time to maybe, you know, draw three cards later mm. or deal with a second Evelyn, something like that. But if it doesn't block, I think we're going to see that mode... And yeah, what a big draw, but yep, decides to block. That unlocks Voltage Surge. Yep, and to be fair, the cards that are in Exile, they're not that fantastic. Sure, there's a Hive of the Eye Tyrant there, which would be nice, but with yep. no other vampires in hand. Again, as with Kaito earlier, she's done her job. So let's see yep. if she does get in on the action. Okay, so maybe Mike wants to use this Infernal Grasp right now. Oh, this is so close right now. And just for a world championship spot already this early in our Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I love this structure that just sends people to the world championship as early That's as the great. first round. It's so incredible. Oh, it's so nice. 
<laughs> okay, all right. So that's still a chunk of damage coming through. That's still six. Mike will go down to ten. Infernal Grasp is going to hit him in the schnoz for two as well. So let's see where this Grasp goes. If anywhere right now. You know, Mike does still have a pretty healthy life total, so might, you know, do exactly what I was saying earlier. Use his life total as a resource and maybe see if there's a bigger thing to Infernal Grasp. The problem with Infernal Grasp, it's not the best card at just, like, wait and see kind of thing because not mm -hmm. only are you taking damage, but you're taking damage while casting the card. So now if you take four here, <laughs> you got to think you're taking six, uh, yeah. essentially. And, yeah, you're taking trample damage from the Workshop Warchief as well. And I mean, the follow-up here could be a Zeotora, the Incinerator, which ideally Mike would love to kill, but uh, we're just gonna see Voltage Surge, sack a treasure, and get rid of Evelyn the Covetous, so bye-bye lands. Not too sad about that. Yep. And I think you're... no Zeotora means let's kill a Rhino. Yep, I think you're exactly right on that. Mike's just like, if you play Zeotora, I cannot win if I fire this off on a 4-4. I'd have to get very mm -hmm. lucky to find another piece of removal. Uh, decides to wait, gets mildly punished because of that decision. Just because, well, you took four extra damage here, you oh. get 12 if you just fired it off. That's a big one. That's a good one. Corpse Appraiser is so good. I love this card. Gonna be able to exile something. There's nothing really of relevance in this matchup, but taking a look at the cards in your library just digs him a little deeper down. Yes, yes, yes. And especially before these unlicensed hurt, unlicensed hearst, uh come into play. Oh, yeah. Corpse Ooh, Appraiser is very good at finding other good cards. And just imagine if Evelyn was still in play right now, finding another two vampires Oof. here would have triggered for four more cards. So Evelyn being taken <laughs> off the battlefield was very important for Shota. Yes, indeed. And now we'll see on the end step, Riveteer's Charm goes off, looks at three more cards here for Shota, who's able to play them draws into another copy of the Tenacious Underdog. So, able to rebuild this battlefield here. Yeah, we'll see if Shota wants to blitz any of these and decides to, uh, to kind of just get aggressive here. Shota mm -hmm. just smells blood here and just wants to try to get this game over with. I don't blame him, honestly. He's got the higher life yeah. total. He has more cards you know, available to him to do some stuff with. And uh, a double block here will be favorable for Mike Sigris as only one of the creatures will die. Mm -hmm. Yep, trading up here, trading a 3-3 three, three for a 4-4 four, four is always what you want to be doing in combat. Uh, making sure to get a better creature off the battlefield than the one that you're giving up. Yeah. And one of the important things I've noticed with these Blitz cards as well, like playing in Limited or even just playing them in Standard, is you don't want to kill them in combat if you if you can avoid it because mm -hmm. then you give them something else to do potentially in their main phase, whereas if it's the end step, it's only an instant that can affect the board state. Very good point there, very good point. Now we're gonna see the very nice combo, nice. combo number one in this deck of Reflection of Kiki Jiki, being able to copy a removal spell. <laughs> you know, yep. usually something you don't see, but if you copy mm -hmm. Blood Tithe Harvester, not only do you get another blood, but now sacrifice that, point it at a creature of your opponents, and you can keep yeah. doing this every turn until Shota finds a piece of removal to kind of stop this from happening. Yep. And the more he does it, the more, the bigger the, the thing is that the Blood Tithe Harvester can kill. So, yeah, let's get some blood tokens going here, but it does look like one is going to be sacked to try and find a bit more action. So, bye bye Mountain, something good. Oh. Okay, it's Voltage Search. That's, That's cool. a big That's cool. one. Now Mike has the decision. Do I want to go to three? Do I want to go to three and uh, put this tenacious underdog in play and attack? That runs a bit of a uh, of a foul against Workshop Warchief blitzing yeah. out. You know, remember that Oof. card can also blitz uh, uh -huh. for one extra mana for six mana, and that would pretty much be GG. Not pretty much. That would be GG if Mike yep. would have went for that. It's kind of the same feeling when you see a blitzed out work workshop war chief as a rhino charging you. And speak of the devil, there he is. Yep. Mike had to have Oy. been fist pumping when you see that cycle at this stage of the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think the same. Shota would probably be fist pumping uh, to draw that workshop war chief. Yeah. And you can cast it, I believe. Yeah, that is a treasure. Or, yeah, he just he's got two green there, so he can cast it if he wants to. But I don't know, he might he might want to make a rhino charge. Yeah, you might, might want to save that for a surprise instead. attack. 
And honestly, yeah. it makes sense because whatever creature Shota puts onto the battlefield and says go without any removal dies to reflection of Kiki Jiki Blood Tithe Harvester. Mm -hmm. So Sigrist actually could just double reflection Blood Tithe Harvester, Oof. sack both of those reflections to deal with the 5 3 and the 4 4 if, if Shota went for that play. All righty. Well, here comes three damage. Are you going to go down to two, Mike Sigrist? If my That's math scary. is correct, I see 10 damage coming back from Mike Sigrist. So unless Shota draws a Volted Surge, Mike Sigrist can attack for lethal next turn with that tenacious underdog and lock up a seat at the World Championship. He can't take the damage here, though, right? Otherwise, he would die. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah, you, too, right? yeah, you can't blitz, but with Volted Surge, unless Shota finds Volted Surge himself. Does he? Oh, no, he, he finds Riveter's Charm. So with the Kiki Jikis and the three toughness creatures. Woo! You're gonna, I mean, what Shota has to do here is has to put that pathway on red, go into full control mold and bluff because there's yep. a chance Mike doesn't go for it. You know, because honestly, if Mike goes for it and then there is a um, a Blitz creature to come back, Mike loses the game. So it's a risk here still for Mike to see if he pulls the trigger and cements himself into uh, the oh world championship. Oh, goodness. Oh, man. The All right. Game. Mike, <laughs> sniff him out. I believe in you, Siggy. All righty, let's go. Come on, chat. Spam those piggies to root for Siggy. I want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> let's see yep, and here's he a voltage surge check out. that's a voltage <laughs> surge check how many have we cast and it there's looks like one three in total in the deck yep. so there's two in the deck can Mike afford to play around it all right this is a tense tense moment here his clock is yep. four minutes left on it but this mm -hmm. game is going to be over long before that's up so a big thing here from Mike Sigrist and if Mike he can't wins do... Yeah, sorry, go He's, ahead. He secures his spot in the World Championship, so this is for a lot of marbles. And he can't do any cute, cheeky play of, like, Reflection, Blood Tithe, Harvester twice and just attack with those and maybe leave a creature back or anything like that. The math only adds up to nine, so Mike has to go all in to, mm -hmm. you know, lock this up, and the clock is running down here on Mike. Does he do it? All right, Mike. He's not going to. <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, no. He didn't go for oh. it. He didn't. Oh, what are the repercussions of this going to be? Blood Tithe Harvester just going for it. He's playing it safe. He wants to keep those Kiki Jikis up to copy the Blood Tithe oh. Harvesters, which he can do on the end step of Shota's and keep those creatures around. But will he survive this next attack? He didn't go for it. And that unleashes Workshop Warchief to be able to be blitzed in and force some chump locking as well as gain three life and get a 4-4 four, four to make it so Mike will not even have a lethal attack next turn. Shota can even pair it with Workshop Warchief to come in blitzed as well as Tenacious Underdog to be played as a second blocker. Oh yeah. my God. Ooh, -wee. okay. It's 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 not over yet. Okay, the Workshop Warchief, the biggest issue is it gains the three life. So. There's 10 damage that Mike needs to find without taking any of his own. So he can, in the Blitz stage, copy the Blood Tithe Harvester with the Kiki Jikis, with the Reflections, yep. and then kill. So he wouldn't have to block anything. Yep. Uh, well, the Blood Tithe Harvester's ability is as a sorcery. Oh, is if it? I am, no. If I'm remembering correctly. Darn it. Yeah. So that, Bad that play... That is not on the line, but one thing that is on the line is reflectioning Blood Tithe Harvesters and double blocking with those. So you don't lose your own reflections. Yeah. Um, and then you get a couple more bloods. You can, at end step, you know, use all three of those bloods to make sure you have mm -hmm. a good draw. Ooh, here comes the rhino. Curses be upon you only as sorcery text. Yeah, as right. Workshop War Chief is going to gain the three life, it's going to go swinging. Reflections can get themselves some blockers here just to take care of this Workshop War Chief. But, you know, Mike made a line where if if Shota had Workshop War Chief plus Voltage Surge, it wouldn't be a consideration is, you know, can Mike survive this turn? Mike would be dead. 
you know? So that was the risk yeah. that he played around because he would just lose to this attack. It would be Shota moving on and Mike would have to win that next round um, to be able to clinch his seat. So, you know, the, the risk... The risk was there, and Mike played around it, and we'll see if he can still fight back. For sure. All right, so we're making a copy of the reflection. And then what are we doing? Okay. And two Blood pretty... Tithe Harvesters copied would mean two more blood tokens, as well as only one damage coming through. And Mike is down to two minutes. Now it is a real concern. Yeah. You know, now that this... Uh, you know, five, when we were at five minutes, there was another thing, but now it is really coming down to it. Okay. Okay, so we're only doing one block here. So, you know, honestly, that now Mike... That underdog off the table. Now Mike is not playing around Voltage Surge, you know? Like, at this point, if, if Shota had Voltage Surge, the game would be over. Yeah, this game would you be know? over. So it's weird to not play around at this turn, but what Mike is doing is setting up these reflections... Um, where then at end step, you can copy a creature and then make a gigantic attack. Mm. And let's see if it's still going to be enough. But now the unfortunate part is... It's two blockers now. Mike's at two as well, so Tenacious Underdog cannot be blitzed. Yeah. And here we go. You get to make as many reflections as you have mana <laughs> as this nice little synergy, <laughs> and this should still do it. <laughs> Oh no, that's fantastic. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, that's great. And they're all going to hang around. Look at this. Okay. So there's going to be two blockers <laughs> that can block the two blood ties. And there you go. You attack for 12. Showed us tapped out. That's going to do it. And Mike's going to find it. Mike really wanted to do this in style. Mike wanted to do this in style instead of just win with your traditional attack. I mean, this is still pretty stylish. That's what, six Kikijikis on the battlefield? Yeah. So Mike Sigris finds the line, 43 seconds to go. Go, Kikijiki, go! <laughs> that is Mike Sigris into the World Championship, everybody. <laughs> yes, please! <laughs> <laughs> You know what? He was just oh. playing with us in the end there. He was just like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to do this in style. I'm going to be on two life. I'm going to have 40 seconds left. And then I'm just going to kill you with a bunch of freaking Kiki Jikis. Hell yeah. yes, Mike Sigrist.